So guys, here we have the Europa League final, guys. It is me, AD Summer for four, and today, guys, we'll give you guys a good, concise preview for the Europa League final, guys. Remember, guys, if you're new out here, considering that like button, hit the subscribe button as well. Comment down with your thoughts, comment section below, guys, as we're gonna preview this Europa League final. Guys, this is all, there's a lot on the line for this final, and what's so interesting that this is there's so much heritage in this final. Like in terms of football heritage, this might be like the most football heritage you could ever get in a final. And of all three finals, guys, of all three European competition finals, I'm actually most excited for the for this one in particular. And I think this is probably the most toughest to call, in my opinion. Um, so what makes this very interesting is that Sevilla never lost a Europa League final. Sevilla have reached six Europa League finals, have never ever lost any of the finals. Roma, on the other hand, Mourinho, on the other hand, has never lost a European final. So someone is gonna lose this final. You know, I, you know, and it's like it's kind of like the best club in the competition going up against the best one of the best coaches in the world in Europe, right? And this is such a fascinating battle because, like I said, one is going to lose on the day, and of course, the final is in Budapest. And you know, it's really interesting, guys. Both of the teams are gonna likely need to win this competition to secure Champions League football. Because both clubs are not going to get Champions League through the league. Obviously, Sevilla, we know there is pretty much no chance for them. As for Roma, there is a very, very slim chance that they could get top four. I very much doubt it, though, because of the fact they draw points to Salernitana at home. That, um, yeah, I just don't think they're. They just don't think they have enough in the tanks. They're going to have to go all in for this competition. And if they don't win this, they might be back in the Conference League, which will be very disappointing, man. So they have to go all in for this competition, man. All in, man. All in. So, coming into this game, guys, let's talk about Sevilla. Let's talk about Sevilla first, all right? Um, Sevilla, actually, let's talk about Roma first. Let's talk about Roma. So, Roma, man, the key guy is Paul Dybala. This is Roma's by far most integral player to this team. He is fundamentally important to this team. He brings so much value and the sense of goal scoring, creativity, dribbling, playmaking, you you name it. He, he brings everything to this team. And I just look at Roma in particular with the stage, the, the path they've had to this final. You know, start off the group with Real Batiste and the group, Ludogorets and HAK. And they actually finished second. You know, they all they needed to score, they needed to win the final game against Ludogorets. And remember guys, a draw wouldn't have been enough. Because if they had tied that game, they would have been sent to the Conference League. And so, they managed to get that win, the 3-1 win over Ludogorets. And then they played against RB Salzburg that just dropped down for the Champions League. We saw what they did in that Milan group. And... They gave a pretty good uh, fight, you know. They're able to get a draw against Milan, and obviously they were able to, um, you know, win the first leg at home, and then the second leg, man, Roma got the job done. And then this is when it got crazy when they played Real Sociedad in round of 16. They have been so amazing in La Liga. They've been amazing. They topped the group with Manchester United, of course, and so it was always gonna be a difficult task, you know. They beat Real Sociedad two 0 at home, and then the second leg they played, uh, they got the result, the nil nil draw, as they wanted. And in the quarterfinals, they played against Feyenoord. They lost the first leg one 0 to Feyenoord, guys. And the second leg, man, there um it was one one aggregate, one one the game, and obviously Feyenoord went advanced two one aggregate. And off comes this guy himself, man, Paulo Dybala, off the bench, scores in the 89th minute to send the game into extra time. And of course, Gini Wijnaldum and obviously Tammy Abraham, I believe, scored the goals. Actually, I don't think Gini, I think Pellegrini scored extra time, not Gini Wijnaldum. Um, I'll correct it if I'm wrong here in the text thing here, but yeah, I mean it's a huge, huge man, you know. And then the semifinals to play against Leverkusen, and they won the first leg one nil, and then the second leg they played very defensive and got the nil nil draw. So we see with this Roma team is that they're they know how to score goals, but the issue I have with this Roma team is that defensively they're very, very vulnerable, right? And defensively they, they've been able to be, de defend pretty well. They haven't really conceded a lot of goals, right? And I think for this Roma team, you see how important Dybala is. Now, as of the time recording this video, I'm recording this video on May 23rd, 2023. The final will, of course, be on May 31st, 2023. Dybala's fitness is up in there. He isn't He isn't injured. He isn't fully fit, though. And I think for Roma, they need him to be fully fit for the, for the final. Because I'm telling this right now, guys. If Roma do not have this guy fully fit for the final, I find it very, very hard for Roma to win this final. They need him to be at his absolute best to have any, to, to, you know, to have a chance in that final, okay, and I look at this um, Roma team in particular, you know, Mourinho, man, of course, we know what he's going to do in the final, he's going to be playing very defensive, very much foul base, and he's going to try to put, he's going to try everything he can to win this game some way possible, I wouldn't even be surprised he even pushes the penalties, you know, 
Um, we just know Mourinho is the guy that he's going to find a way to win, you know? And I look at the Sevilla team. Sevilla, on the other hand, have been um, amazing as well. You know, in the Champions League, you know, things, you know, didn't go so great for them. They went out in the group stage of the Champions League. Maybe they did that on purpose, <laughs> as some people like to say. Uh, then, obviously, you know, they were in the Manchester City Dortmund group. It was a pretty difficult group, to be fair. They managed to get a draw away, though, at Dortmund, which I think is pretty impressive. Um, and then in the round of 16, they played against PSV. They destroyed PSV first, like, 3-0. You're thinking to yourself, job done, right? And the second leg, they lost 2-0 and managed to squeeze through barely. And then the, in, the round of, in the round of 16, they played against Ferenbache, won 2-0 the first leg. And then the second leg, they lost 1-0. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, they're going to play against Manchester United. Surely they'll get caught. I mean, up until this point, Manchester United had all beaten all the Spanish teams. Um, they have knocked out every Spanish team. They knocked out Barcelona. They knocked out Real Betis. And, you know, they were coming into this game in flying form. And they obviously beat Sociedad. So they had beat all the Spanish teams up until this point. And now Sevilla will be the last one standing. And, of course, they're probably the weakest of the four, you know. And they managed to get the job done, you know, win the first, like, 2-0. But, as we all know, guys, Sevilla did an insane comeback. And in the second leg, uh, Sevilla destroyed United. Sevilla destroyed United. And this is where I started to fear for Sevilla. Because there's this crazy stat out there, guys. That Sevilla, when they have made it past the quarterfinals, they've never got eliminated. They've gone out to win the competition. There's that crazy stat. I should have brought this up in my preview when I was doing the quarterfinal predictions. And that the Sevilla has is pretty much perfect. Like, they've never gone out of the quarterfinals. Like, whenever they go out, it's before the quarterfinals. Then they played against the Juventus team. You know, Juventus team that is good on paper. You have, like, players like Vlaovic, Chiesa, Di Maria... And the Chesney and goal, and they managed to get a draw away into red, and arguably being the better team, you know. And then obviously Juventus got the lady goes Zagati, and then obviously in the second leg, man, they played against Juventus. They had to fight through. You had to come from behind against Juventus, and now they put themselves in final. And Sevilla, man, you know the the guy. Of course, we have to look at is En Naziri. En Naziri is that guy. He is that difference maker. He is one of the most integral players to this team. He is fundamentally important. He scores so many goals for this team. He is vital for this team. You know, and Sevilla, like I said, guys, domestically, things have been disaster. As good as it has been for the Europa League final, guys, they haven't been great domestically speaking. They sacked Lobategri, they sacked San Pauli, and now they have Mendela as a coach. And he's done a good job. He's made Sevilla team resolute defensively. He's made them solid defensively, which is, I think, he's made them a bit more defensively better, which was kind of one of Sevilla's biggest issues early in the season, that they were, they were conceding far too many goals. And that's actually what made Sevilla so good last season, was the fact their defense was so great. They were not conceding a lot of goals. Okay, now let's talk about tactics, right? So this is how I think the game is going to pan out, okay? I think Sevilla will be playing very, very free-flowing attacking football. They're going to be playing their, you know, possession-based football, cross into the box, and that open brand of football that Sevilla is, you know, a typical Spanish team does. They're going to be playing that kind of style. They're going to be playing that kind of style in the final, and they'll try to do it. As for all, they're going to be very defensive. They're going to try to counterattack at any chance they can get. And I expect the game to be very, very cagey. I don't expect a lot. I, I think the game will be very physical, very fouls. There could be a lot of fouls, heavy. And I believe the game will be low scoring. Now, one thing to note for Sevilla is that I still feel like their defense, even though they have improved defensively, I have some concerns with them. Because obviously, first of all, Acuna is suspended uh, for the final. So who's going to be the new left back that's going to fill in? You know, um, that's going to be very interesting. And obviously, got Gudej. Gudej is a... Um, He's not really a center back. He's a, um, I'm sorry, he's more of a CDM rather than a center back. And they're playing him out of position. And I feel like that could really, really hurt Sevilla in that regard. They have this other guy, the French center back, who's done a decent job there. I believe he's on loan from, I think it's at Rennes, I think. Um, you guys can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, he's done a decent job there as a makeshift. Um, he's done a decent job on loan. And then obviously got Montiel, who's decent as a fullback. Um, and then, you know... My issue with Sevilla is, like, I still feel like they're defensively, they're still very vulnerable. My issue with Roma is that I feel like they are, they are lacking a lot in goals. I feel like the goal scoring is very, very up in the air. Because there has been some games where they've been able to score a lot of goals. But a lot of games have been very cagey. Like, you know, they haven't been scoring enough goals, you know. And I feel like, for me, Dybella has to start this final. Because, I'm sorry, I don't trust Belotti. Belotti is horrendous. He's a terrible striker, you know. And Tammy Abraham hasn't been as good as he was last season. So I, that's where I really have concern with Roma in particular. And so that's like I said, my, my issue with Sevilla is I think defensively they're still a bit vulnerable. And also, I want to give a shout-out to Rakitic. I need to give a shout-out to guy. This guy has been amazing in the Europa League, you know, making those passes in the midfield, rolling back the years. And I got to give a shout-out to Bono. Bono's been excellent as well. 
And obviously for Roma, Petrucci has been good. Ibanez has been good. And they got some. Wijnaldum is good. Genie Wijnaldum, of course. Dybel and Tammy Abraham. So what is my score prediction, guys? My score prediction. My prediction is 1-0 Sevilla win. I think Sevilla, for me, will just dominate this game. I think they'll be the better team. I feel like Roma will just be hanging on for most of the game. And I just think that Sevilla will get the job done extra time. I think the game will go to extra time. And I just have a feeling Sevilla will have that quality off the bench that will make the difference. Like, I could see Sevilla bringing on Papu Gomez. I could see them bringing on Suso off the bench. You know, Lamella on the bench. Whereas for Roma, I don't think that they have those kind of guys. They don't have those kind of super subs compared to Sevilla's bench. And I really, really hope that I'm wrong. I really want to see Roma win this final. You know, even though I'm a Barca fan and I should be supporting Sevilla, I would, l I want to see Roma. I want to see Mourinho in the Champions League. And I think it would be something very interesting. You know, kind of the last dance kind of thing. And also be kind of cool Mourinho could do back-to-back -back European trophies and plus... You know, it would kind of finally end the Sevilla dominance because, like I said, man, the Sevilla dominance has gone on for tall, far too long, and it'd be nice for some change to happen. You know, eras come to end, as um, you know, people like to say. So, like I said, man, I hope you guys did enjoy. So next, um, next Tuesday, we're gonna be doing a preview of the final. We're gonna be doing an extensive preview. Hopefully, we can get some Sevilla or Roma fans on. Uh, it's gonna take place at 6 p.m. Eastern time, hopefully. And like I said, guys, we're gonna be um, doing a preview for the final for tomorrow. That will take place on the next Wednesday. So, of course, next Wednesday will be a live stream to react to the uh, Europa League final. So, I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Let me know any major talking points I missed in the comment section below. I'm, there probably is. Uh, I forgot if there is. And yeah, like I said, guys, hope you guys did enjoy. Remember, guys, to like the video, enjoy. Subscribe if you're new around here. Comment below your thoughts, comment section below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.